Now, though, Charles Spencer is a Sunday Times best-selling author and in his latest book, A Very Private School, he writes for the first time about how being sent away to boarding school at the age of just eight, well, it robbed him of his childhood. And he joins me now. Thank you so much for coming in today. It's... Um, it's such an honest book. It's, you know, they say searingly honest, and it, and it really is. Why did you feel ready to write this book now? Well, I didn't plan to write this book, really. I just kept a, a screen on my computer, a little folder, and I put memories of this school in there. Right. And then I suddenly realised I had 700 headings of themes of nightmarish things that had happened at the school and happy ones. I made friends and had a good sure. education. Uh, and then... I met a friend who had been there who had his life completely devastated. He was sexually assaulted very seriously many times. And he had never told anyone about it, and he told me. And I said, this is so appalling, and he just grabbed my arm and he said, someone has to write about this. Oh. And I thought, well, at that stage, I was wondering whether I was going to write it, because it's quite a, a thing to take on. Yeah. And then I thought, right, I'm going to do this now. Gosh, because it, it must have been so hard to write about this, because sexually abused, physically abused. At the time when you were a little boy, did you try and tell anybody about what was happening to you? No, I didn't. And it's quite... I, I think the most important thing to remember is how very young we were. Yeah. So I went there when I was just eight, as you mentioned. And I think kids at that age, doesn't matter what their background, mm. they have no context to their life. They just think this is what their parents expect and this is the framework they've been given. And I found with all my friends, none of them told their parents. And I have to say another thing. Uh, coming from the sort of rather uptight background that a lot of us came from uh, back in the 70s, yeah, yeah. we didn't have conversations with our parents on deep levels. Uh, in fact, one of my friends said his abiding memory of being sent to this place aged eight was how strange it was he was in the car with his father because they'd never had a conversation before. And that was his first day going away, being sent away for five years. See, I've never understood that whole thing of sending your children, when they're so young, mm. they're so, so young, to send them away to boarding school. I know it was the done thing, but really for a kid who doesn't... I mean, you didn't have any experience at all of this, and how are you supposed to deal with what was being done to you? Because mm. the person that was doing it to you basically a paedophile. I mean, that's, mm. that's what you would call them, and you do. Mm. And how you're supposed to cope with that, it's just horrendous. Well, I think being sent away at a very delicate age, such as seven or eight, yeah. is, is really... I, I don't support that at all. No. I have seven children, and my two, two of them have chosen to go to boarding school in their mid-teens. Right. And I'm, that's fine. They yes. can make a decision. They, exactly. They've got the wherewithal to make that decision. And if they decided it wasn't for them, they knew there was an exit plan. Mm. But being sent at seven or eight is terrible. And I remember there was one boy who went when I was there and he was looking for his parents the first day. They hadn't told him that they were going to leave him at the school. So he thought he was going on a trip with his parents. And then he started looking for them and had... They'd, they'd gone. They'd gone home and he wasn't going to see them for five weeks. Well, when I went for my first uh, night at this school, I'd never stayed away from home without a family member. Mm. And the horror of it... I mean, I, I had nightmares for six months before going because I couldn't... Age seven and then eight, I, I couldn't get it into my head that this was going to be the case. And then, in this very private school, uh, it was run by very bad people mm. who were indulging their worst fantasies with little boys. And they were allowed allowed to do that. It's got to, and you, you talk about it in the book, it's got to have affected your relationships with, with women in particular because you were abused by, by a woman in a position of authority. And it has to you. You said it had effects on your marriages, it had effects on your relationship with your mum, with your sisters. You know, it's got to. Of course it has. It's completely understandable. I, I, I think that's logically the case. I have to have been affected. As, and I have to stress that this isn't all about me. I, I look at my friends, my contemporaries yeah. from this school and from other schools that were equally bad. Uh, some of my friends went to lovely schools, boarding yeah. schools. Um, and I can see the, the effect on them psychologically is so hard. Look, the good thing is you could plonk me anywhere in the world and I'm going to survive because yeah. I went through this. Yeah, that's but true. But at the same time, um, something small but important in me died during those five years in that school mm. because that was the only way 
a sensitive person, a normal person, could, could cope, really. No, absolutely. But you wanted help. I mean, you used to make yourself ill, physically sick, mm. because you wanted somebody to say, well, there must be something wrong with this wee boy. You know, if he's throwing up, there must be something wrong with him. So you wanted help, but there wasn't any help there. From the age of nine, which is very young, I was desperate for some female love course, and attention. That's totally understandable. Um, under our beds, we had metal chamber pots, and I used to force myself to vomit in those and then present them to a member of staff, female member of staff in the morning. I now realise, hoping that she'd put an arm around me and yeah. care, but I was just treated as this sort of uh, annoying hypochondriac, really. But if I look back now, I probably had a form of bulimia or something. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't diagnosed, so I can't be sure. Mm. But it was something similar to that, probably. And what's really sad is the shame that mm. yourself and, you know, other young girls and boys in that situation have. Because the shame is all on the abuser. As a kid, you're all confused and you feel embarrassed, ashamed, can't tell anybody. It's, it's the worst thing you can do to a kid. One of the most extraordinary things that happened during the writing of this book was right at the end, I'd press send to the publisher. And that mm. afternoon, I was at home at Althorpe and I went into the attic, so I thought, I've got to do something completely different. And I went into an attic room to help a curator with clearing up some books. And out of the top shelf, I pulled out my 1976 diary, and in it was a message from my abuser. I didn't know I had a diary from 1976, mm -hmm. and just to see her writing was really extraordinary. Yeah. <clears throat> I think you're really brave. I Thank really you. do. I think you're really brave. I know already, you know, that, that, that already you've had people saying to you, thank you for doing this. That's been wonderful. People, there's one who was a contemporary of mine, and he said, I just want you to know, because you've written this book, I've told my wife, we've been together 40 years, I just told her about the place and we've been crying for an hour. God, that's so sad. Mm. It's so, so sad. Thank you for coming in and for talking to, to us about this. I mean, Madewell Hall, they've actually, as you would expect, have issued a statement. They've said, within education today, almost every facet of school life has evolved significantly since the 70s. Well, thank goodness for that. Mm. At the heart of the changes is safeguarding of children and promotion of their welfare. We'd encourage anybody with similar experiences to Charles to come forward and contact the school, the local authority or the police. So that's what they're saying. Now, this was then, this was then, but sadly, as we know, it still continues in other places. We know that, we know that. So I think you've done a brilliant job highlighting that. And can I just say, we're just about to talk to our Royal Correspondent. Could you give Kate our love? The next time you're talking to them, <laughs> just everybody's worried about her. Just that's all I wanted to say to you, because I know you, it's Lorraine. a very private, private thing. You're very and Thank you for coming in. Thank you. And for help and advice and anything we've talked about, there are helplines on our website. And Charles's book, A Very Private School, is actually out on Thursday. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you.